On today's podcast, we're talking about mindsets to help pull our thoughts toward the positive future we are trying to create. We're focusing on today's episode on the daily practice to pull ourselves away from negativity, fear, and gossip, and into positive mindsets that fuel the future we hope to create. Welcome back to The Thermostat with Jason Barger. If you're currently on a commute, a walk, or just a micro break in your day, glad you're making time to step back, to think, and to reflect on the next steps on your journey. I've never been more convinced the best leaders and team cultures in the world are the ones that make time to step back, breathe in good oxygen, and calibrate their thermostat. I hope today's conversation leaves you feeling grounded and inspired. Now let's dive into today's topic to engage our minds and hearts in order to authentically lead and create compelling cultures wherever we are in the world. Hey, everyone, it's Jason, and welcome back to the Thermostat Podcast, wherever you are and however you're coming to the podcast today. Welcome in. So glad you are here. Uh, We are in season eight, well over 230 episodes now. Uh, Super hard to believe that uh, that many episodes already exist and are out there. But, uh, you know, we've been plugging away at this for for some time now. So if you are new to the podcast, welcome in. So glad you're here. Hope you'll go back, check out so many great uh, micro pods and also interviews and chats and conversations I've had with other thought leaders from around the world. And uh, just hopefully uh, you'll you'll take some time to snoop around and check stuff out. And uh, hopefully it adds value to you. For the people that have been here since the very beginning or, or aren't new to the podcast, I'm so glad this continues to be a place that adds value uh, to your life, to your work, helps you um, think about the temperature that you're trying to set in your life and your work and gives you some things to think about. My commitment to you, as always, is I want this podcast to be a place for you to step back, take a deep breath, uh, hopefully be filled with some good oxygen, some some things to think about for your life, for your work, and how to continue to show up and, 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 uh, and set the temperature for the cultures in your life for your family, for your your friendships, for certainly your team and organization that you serve. Uh, that's the idea is that hopefully these things contribute and add value to you. And uh, I'm so fortunate to get to play that role with so many teams and organizations. So thanks for being here. Uh, if you will do me a quick favor before we start today, if you will rate the podcast five stars on whatever platform you're on, if you will leave an authentic review in your own voice you know, not AI, your own voice, what resonated with you, what's, you know, why is that the are these messages important in the world, whatever that is, that really helps the algorithms and helps people find these, uh, you know, these messages. And obviously, everybody that shares the podcast uh, on social media or with your team at work and says, hey, let's listen to this. And then let's talk about the questions at the end or whatever that is. Those are ways in which these messages are amplified and shared in the world. So thanks to everybody that takes a moment to do that. Very much appreciate that. Positive leadership isn't about puppy dogs and ice cream. <laughs> when I say the term positive leadership, which many of you know that, uh, that, that it's, I, I'm, I don't mean positive leadership is just puppy dogs and ice cream. Positive leadership isn't fluffy. It's not just about being nice and kind although I hope we are nice and kind. Positive leadership is about the ability of being able to name the obstacles or challenges we might be facing, not hide from them, not pretend like they're not there, to just make everybody happy or to just quote-unquote stay positive, but actually the ability to name the obstacles and challenges we might be facing and still choose to be optimistic about the future we are creating together. That is positive leadership. But we live in a quite quite divisive times, as we know this. We live in these divisive times when it's easy to let our mindsets get filled with the thoughts of negativity, of gossip, of blame, of doubts, of worries, or just general doom and gloom. There are plenty of things we can point to and think about that will conjure up those kind of feelings. So we have the opportunity each day to pull our mindsets in that positive direction. And that's where the AA battery can teach us all. So on today's podcast, we're talking about mindsets to help pull our thoughts toward the positive future we are trying to create. 
We're focusing on today's episode on the daily practice to pull ourselves away from negativity, fear, and gossip, and into positive mindsets that fuel the future we hope to create. But before we dive into today's topic, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Many teams and organizations right now are realizing that they need to do both. They need to engage the minds and hearts of their people in person, where everyone in the room can experience the energy of congregating together and find clarity for the road ahead. And they also need to continue to find ways to engage the minds and hearts of their people virtually with those who are working remotely or at a distance. So if you are in the process of planning your next team meeting, company all hands event, conference or culture summit, and are looking for support with a powerful keynote speech, facilitated team conversations that are the currency for change, or deeper development on leadership mindset and an intentional strategy for the culture you're trying to create, I hope you'll contact us at jasonvbarger.com, jasonvbarger.com. It is my privilege and our honor to partner with great people to provide support in these areas. We want to breathe oxygen into your leaders and throughout your organization so you can set the temperature you want for your culture. We look forward to connecting with you soon. I hope you'll contact us at jasonvbarger.com, jasonvbarger.com. It is my privilege and our honor to partner with great people to provide support in these areas. We want to breathe oxygen into your leaders and throughout your organization so you can set the temperature you want for your culture. We look forward to connecting with you soon. So some of you may remember the story that I tell in my book, my latest book, Breathing Oxygen, where I talk about volunteering for my daughter's field day at her school at the you know, the end of a school year. This is a number of years ago when she was still, she was wrapping up elementary school. But, you know, one of those days at the end of the school year where they have parents come out, parent volunteers, and they set up all these different stations of games that kids can play. And then every 15 minutes, a siren goes off. And then the, you know, the class runs to the next station and you do that all, you know, all day long. And so I, uh, I signed up and was willing to be a parent volunteer. And so I showed up and they threw me at the tug of war station, which if you remember this story or, uh, if you're new to it, I'll quickly, uh, summarize it. But if you've ever played tug of war, Then, uh, you know, the concept, you know, you get split up the team and, you know, you say on your marks, get set, go. And they start pulling the rope. Well, after about two or three minutes of playing tug of war, what you quickly realize is that the kids start looking at you like, okay, what do we do now? Because it's you still have, you know, you've got 12 or 13 minutes left till the next siren goes off. And so you got some time to kill and they're looking at you like, what's next? And after I the first group. I realized this, that they kind of lost its luster after two or three minutes. All of a sudden, I had to quickly think on my feet. And so the first thing that came to my mind is I looked at them and said, who wants to do boys versus girls? And all of a sudden, they just went crazy. The kids started jumping around and they started to just, you know, the boys went to one side of the rope and they started to like flex their little muscles and chest bump and, you know, say, yeah, we're going to dominate you. And, you know, it was just hilarious to watch this scene, this machismo, you know, on one side of the rope. And then I walked over to, to the to the girl side of the rope, which maybe because I was there to support my daughter. I have two older sons, too. So I get the guy thing, too. But I walked over this day in support of of the little ladies. And I come, uh, you know, I come walking over to them. And while the boys are flexing their muscles and pumping their chest, I said quietly to the girls, I said, hey, organize yourselves on the rope, you know, align yourself kind of in zipper fashion on each side of the rope all the way down the rope. And they all looked up at me and all the girls actually were like looking at you and, you know, listening to what I had to say. And I said, hey, pick out a captain. And they shook their head and they're like, okay, okay. And I said, pick out a captain. And captain, as soon as I start the the contest, yell out one, two, three, and everybody pull together on three. One, two, three, pull. One, two, three, pull. You got it? And they all looked at me like, yeah, we got it. They actually like listened and then they started to align themselves. So it was this this great illustration of this machismo on one side of the rope and then this kind of quiet confidence that's organized on on the other side of the rope. And so I, you know, I, I grabbed the rope and I said, on your marks, get set, go. And as soon as I said, go, 
you know, the guys came flying in at the last minute, all of them disorganized, all in a different section on the rope. And they started pulling mightily with their tiny little muscles. But, you know, one kid was pulling it in one direction and another kid was kind of pulling it in a slightly different direction. And it was creating this kind of tension on the rope. And they were trying as hard as they could, but they were kind of working against each other. And then on the girl side of the rope, the captain yelled out, one, two, three. And all the girls pulled, one, two, three, pull. And in about three pulls, the girls won, and the boys absolutely freaked out. And they would start, you know, calling quickly for a do-over, do-over, and I would look at them like, okay, yeah, (laughs) sure, we'll do it again, because they somehow think they're going to win the second time. But yet, they do the same thing over and over again. And all morning long, I kept doing this, and the girls kept winning. And so as I'm watching this, there were so many parallels to the modern workforce today as an image for so many teams and organizations. So many different generations in the workforce today that are, you know, running in and grabbing that metaphorical rope. And and many of them are, are pulling it as hard as they can, but they have different ideas about how we ought to be pulling the rope. And they're going so quickly that they're just grabbing it and they aren't taking any time to kind of align with each other. And sometimes in organizations, then you have one department that's kind of pulling the rope this way, but another department that's pulling it this way. And everybody thinks they have the better way idea, the way that we ought to do it. And there's finger pointing, there's blame, and they're, let's do it over, but we're not making changes. And yet what we also know, that the best places, the best teams, the best organizations, the best cultures are the ones that where everyone does understand their place on the rope. And they, do, they are equipped and empowered to use their great, greatest strengths and gifts to pull in the direction. They have clarity of how we're going to pull the rope and in what direction we're going to pull and at what cadence we're going to pull. And obviously, those are the best. So the best leaders know they need to get everyone on the rope aligned and in coordination and know why and when and how we're going to pull the rope together. And it doesn't just magically happen. We must do the work to get people pulling in the same direction on our teams, on in our families, in our organizations, in our communities, etc. It begins with our mindset. Do we see team and the overall mission, or are we only focused on our own individual pursuits? How am I going to pull the rope and what's most important to me? Mindset matters as we continue to discuss this idea. So now it's time to bring in this image of a double A battery as another image for us to to play with. You know, a while back, somebody uh, told me about how a battery works, um, you know, which, uh, you know, I'm just glad they do. But but I hadn't taken the time to kind of think about how does a battery actually work. But there is a positive and a negative side of every battery. Okay, I knew that. And in fact, both sides are needed in order to produce the power and the energy that the battery provides. Interestingly enough, both the positive and the negative side are needed in order to produce the power and energy that the battery provides. Remember that. But the way the battery gets its power is when the electrons are pulled from the negative side to the positive side. That is the real term that, that as you as I then after, you know, this was shared with me, I started to, to do more research and kind of read up about it. And that is the term that they use, that the that the electrons are pulled from negative to positive. And and which I think is, is very interesting, you know, so on every team, in every culture, in every family, in every organization, in every company, negative tension exists from time to time. We're not going to totally get rid of it. And in fact, in some ways, it, it belongs because it helps us figure out and realize when there might be tension or there may be, might be opportunities to improve. And so the existence of that negativity or that tension that might be there actually belongs and is a part of uh, the process. In the process of striving for goals or seeking progress and development, getting better at what you do individually or what you do collectively, competing to raise your performance or accomplish your mission, negativity and challenges will arise. No matter what, they will. But like a battery, 
the adversity is needed and just a part of the equation. The key is that like the battery, the team, the family, the organization, the company, the group of humans of any kind, it gets its power when the energy is pulled from the negative to the positive side. The process of shifting our minds, our actions, our mindset, our conversations from negative to positive creates the power that fuels us. The best leaders and teams seek out the negative and proactively pull it to the positive. And the term pull, again, is I think is really critical because it's not push. It's not push it that way. It's pulling it. And I believe there's a fine line between leaders who get others to help pull rather than leaders who just push. They get the, the leaders that pull, they get everyone looking in the same direction and they, they understand why we're doing this and how we're and the standards are high and they themselves are going to also help pull and they're going to pull the energy towards solutions, toward optimism, towards progress, towards that positive action that we are together pulling rather than somebody just pushing against your will. So in your team or your organization or however you're thinking about this today, how you develop the mindset of people and how you develop leaders and how you proactively shape your culture matters. And of course, as somebody who helps teams and organizations shape culture and develop people and create these kind of mindsets around leadership and clarity of mission, vision, values, of course, we you know recognize that it all is about the proactive efforts. It doesn't just magically happen. The ones who don't prioritize the time and efforts to pull the energy with it within their team are the ones that end up with more scattered, negative, and misaligned teams. So some questions to ponder as we think about this, these, these images that I've shared today. Who are the players on your team, however you're thinking about that or coming to this this conversation today, who are the players who are grabbing the rope on your team in life or work? And are they pulling in the same direction? And what proactively can you do to help pull the energy from negative to positive? And remember, both negative and positive always exist, but the best seek out ways to align their minds, their hearts, look in the same direction, and pull the energy from negative to positive. So how will you align and pull the energy next? I hope today's episode got you thinking in some exciting ways. If anything that we've shared uh, is if you have a thought about it or if, if you think there's other topics that might be helpful to you or if we can be supportive to your team or organization, I hope you'll email us, info at jasonvbarger.com, info at jasonvbarger.com. And we'll continue to try to meet you where you are and continue to provide content that adds value to you and your life and your work. I hope this helped breathe a little oxygen into you, appreciation and gratitude for all that is within our control, the ability to kind of pull energy from negative to positive, to set the temperature that we want, and to be clear on what is that for our life and work, and to realize that calibrating our own personal thermostat requires recognition and understanding of ourself and awareness around what is that behavioral response that we want to put in to the world, that we want to be those kind of thermostats uh, so that we can set the temperature for ourselves and for others around us for the culture that we're trying to create. So I hope you'll keep tuning in, and I hope uh, you, you continue to go back and check out old episodes. Again, thanks to everybody who rates and, and leaves a, a positive review and all the things, shares the podcast with, with others. And remember that the best leaders, teams, and cultures on the planet, they stimulate progress by recalibrating their thermostats together. So step back, remember, be a thermostat, and breathe good oxygen. Thank you for listening to today's podcast, and I hope the messages and questions stimulate positive change along your path. As always, if these messages resonate with you and add value to your life, I hope you'll help amplify them throughout the world. Please rate, comment, and share on whatever podcast or social media platform you're using. 
and share this podcast with the people in your life or work who should be part of these conversations. That way, this spirit does, in fact, spread. If these messages or developing leaders and culture would be helpful to you and your organization, please contact us at jasonvbarger.com, jasonvbarger.com. And remember, we are all ambassadors for the culture we want to create in our life and work. We have to own the vision we want to be a part of. The future of leadership is you, is me, is us. Be a thermostat.